Jewel um, came from a very simple idea, actually. Uh, it was almost like a little game or a, a puzzle for me, a choreographic puzzle. Um, and it was originally quite an abstract concept. It was just structural. I wanted to make a, a solo and another solo that would click together and interlock into a duet so that when you saw the duet, you realised that when you saw the solos, they were actually two halves of one of the whole. And so we went about making the material that would make up this, this piece and it kind of, through the making of it, it led to a, a kind of a much more emotional piece than I expected. Actually, I thought it would be more. Yeah, it, it, my intention wasn't to make anything about relationship or, um, or I mean, I, was, I, I guess I was hoping that there might be some kind of, um, some kind of psychological kind of consequence because of that structure, but I wasn't sure what it was going to be, so the, the result was a bit of a surprise. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was just interested in kind of in, in seeing what the result would be, uh, what's, what it would lead to, I guess. And um, for me, I like having kind of rules or parameters to work within. I like, I like setting up a kind of the, the boundaries of what I'm making and then seeing what the, what the detail and the in intricacies of, of the content within that lead to. They really bring the piece to life. A lot of the, the ways that we came up with the material are quite kind of um, abstract in, in their origins, but they're the ones, through their interpretation of the movement and, and all, everything that they bring to it, it kind of it just takes it somewhere else to another level. And particularly once they are together and in the duet part, it really started to take on a life of its own. Because it really was just a matter of making the solo material and then crashing those things together and seeing what happened. And we often wouldn't know what would happen. And, and it was really in their hands how they, how they dealt with the material. It was just, for me, it was about finding a really simple structure in which to make complex material. So I really like, I love making movement and experimenting with how to generate choreography. I really wanted to work with these two dancers in particular. Just ever so slightly delaying it, so don't go together. It's got to go head arms. So uh, like and I thought that they would be really interesting together because they're quite different. And I thought that that contrast and that, that tension of their difference would make for an interesting piece, and I think it does. I, I liked the idea of, of having the, the dual-sided audience. Um, it was something we came to quite late in the process. It wasn't, it, it wasn't always the idea. It was when we were about to go into the theatre for the first premiere, we thought, well, maybe the audience could be on two sides. It was really quite late in, in the in proceedings. Um, but I like the idea that it reflects that sense of duality and the idea that there are two sides to every story. And, and, and I like the, the, the fact that you're watching other watchers, that you see that there's another perspective, that it's in front of you, that you're you're seeing that there are witnesses to what you're watching and that the, what they're watching is different to, to what you're seeing. Um, and I like that, the, the kind of three-dimensionality of, of the performance as well, that it isn't just to one front, that, that there's a sense that their backs are just as important as their fronts and their sides. And yeah, I found that interesting. And the back row is not too far away either. No, yeah, no, keep it intimate and close and, and feel like you're really kind of cradling the performance, I guess, that the performance is happening and it's flanked by the, by the audience. So, so it's kind of like the, you could see it that they're, 
maybe you could interpret it as, as, as them being almost trapped by the audience, but also held by the audience. Could be either way. Yeah. I think sometimes, yeah, you see the sweat flying through the air like a tennis player. And um, yeah, I, I like that. I like feeling like, like the performance, that you are almost implicated in the performance. You're part of it because of your proximity. The audience response is really interesting because people always see things that you don't expect. And um, I guess it, it really depends on people's own experience. You know, you always read things depending on what you're, you project your own experience onto what you're seeing. So some people see it as very, as beautiful. Some people see it as, as really tense and kind of aggressive. Um, some people see it as sad. Um, for me, I wasn't setting out for it to be any of those things. Um, I guess just the, the nature of the material and the kind of the physicality of it leads to those interpretations. But yeah, I find that interesting, the, um, the range of responses to it. I just hope that the that there's some kind of experience for people. I don't care if it's negative or positive even. I just, I think, for me all I hope is that there's some kind of, that they're affected somehow or they connect with what they're seeing. But, um, yeah, I, after all these years I know that audiences interpret things in such a wide uh, variety of ways. So you can't possibly control that. And obviously it's not going to be for everyone. It's contemporary dance, you know, it's, it's not a musical, it's not entertainment, it's, it is challenging and it is hopefully thought provoking, affecting, visceral. And yeah, I, I, just, I just hope that it's an experience that is kind of memorable for people. Yeah, well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This piece has become intense, yes. I, uh, it's, it surprised me how intense it's become. I think partly it's the sound world as well. The, the composition is a huge part of the piece and it really drives a lot of the changes and kind of emotional shifts in the work. And yeah, I, just, I think Robin Fox's sound design is just amazing for this piece and it, and it really does, um, yeah, it does, change the atmosphere, I think, quite a bit. It's intense. Australian dance is very wide and varied. There's, uh, in this, this same program, there's Lucy Guerin's work, Untrained, which is really hilarious and, and touching and, and human. Um, but yeah, there's the, all sorts of things happen in Australia. But I think one thing that that does link it is a, a um, really interesting physical movement vocabulary. I think that's quite unique and interesting. Yeah. Oh, cool. Thanks. Oh, that's a pleasure. Come back sometime. Is that okay? Oh, I'd love to. <laughs>